Solomon was providing nuggets of wisdom that I believe every single human being needs to grasp because it's going to affect some part of your life. And one thing I love about the Proverbs is that they're so real and practical. We're actually taking the time to go through this first uh, chapter of Proverbs and look at what Solomon was actually dealing with and what he was talking to us about and how it affects our lives in very specific ways. All you know is that God made it real that he's gonna, that it's not, I keep saying gonna, but it's done. And my spirit got a hold of it. It's done. And what drives us in our flesh, because our flesh can't deal with it and the emotions and our experiences and the things that have happened to us in the past and the broken promises and the misinformation that we've gotten in the past. So it's hard to push past all of that and to believe that this time this is the word of God. This isn't somebody's opinion. This isn't somebody just trying to get some money out of me. Send me a hundred dollars and I'll give you the word of the Lord. No, this ain't none of that. This is just the real thing. Ain't it funny when you taste the real thing, how funny it tastes at first? Like, is this real? After you've had the old wine and the sour wine and the nasty wine, then somebody, then God gives you the real thing. It's like, what is this? But when you get the real thing, something comes alive inside of you and there's a hope. There's an expectation. You, your mind can't, our, our natural minds wrestle with this because it keeps saying, you tried this before and it didn't happen. You believed somebody before and it didn't happen. You went to such and such church before and it didn't happen. And I'm throwing in all of the different things to tell you some of the reasons why they didn't happen. Because some of the stuff, it was our idea. Some of the stuff, it was our vision. Some of the stuff, it was just that preacher's. Okay, be nice, Chris. It was just that ministry in their, they didn't know any better, some of them, in their manipulation to just to try to make sure they keep their members or get the money coming in. And, and so there you were. I'm going to plant. I've done it to y'all. Everybody that gives in this offering, God's going to bless you in a week. So I didn't stop and say, Lord, is this you? But because I wanted the blessing, I gave. And God didn't respond because it wasn't an offering in obedience to his word. I didn't do what Peter did. I didn't say, God, if that's you, you tell me to do this. I so much wanted the blessing that I said, OK. Right out the check. <laughs> Give me my blessing. And then a week goes by. And two weeks goes by. Y'all know the story because I'm sure it's happened to you. And then something broke. Went wrong. Car repair. And how much was the repair for? The exact amount that I just gave. That crooked evangelist, preacher, pastor, apostle, whatever they were or they claimed to be. And it becomes another seed that gets planted in our spirit, negative, that causes us to make it, or really to get us to feel like this don't really work. This really, you know. I was in a meeting uh, one time with a group of pastors, and they were planning, uh, they were talking about funds that they needed to raise uh, for some projects that they had in mind. And one of the comments, of a pastor was, I live in the real world. And in the real world, you can't be counting on people to give like that. And so I heard in that person's spirit all of the negative experiences that they have had. That when it comes to a real move of God, it's hard for them now to move past all the stuff that happened. And it's hard to embrace when it's really God. Wow. 
Insight from God. Isn't it great to see why that insight is so important? Well, I got to know it's from God. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirits, soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Here's the reason why it's so important to have the word of God, because this is what the word of God does. It is a two edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. God, the, the word of God can get down in between and discern the difference between when it's just our spirit, when it's just something that's happening in our soul, I should say, and in the spirit. The word of God is able to get in there. You ever have sometimes where you're confused, like, I don't know if this is just me or not. I don't, I'm not sure if this is just me or not. Read, read his word. Go through Psalm, Proverbs, or just ask the Lord, lead me by your word today. And isn't it amazing the times you've read his word and instantly you could tell the difference between this ain't just me. This is the spirit of God. See, that's what the, that's what the word is for. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. I understand that the only way you can even distinguish between that word joints is actually the bone and the marrow. The only way you could even mic at a at a subatomic microscopic level, you'd have to go to that level before you can distinguish between the marrow and the bone. The substance inside of the bone and the bone itself. You'd have to go to the way down some type of super microscope to get before you can see the discerning the difference between where the marrow ends and the bone starts. But the word of God can distinguish between the joints and the marrow. That's how precise it is. Ain't that good to know? So sometimes we in ourselves, we're like, you get in this struggle. I don't want it to just be me. Anybody ever done that? I don't want this to just be me. I really want to know that this is God. His word. Then you know I'm getting insight from God.